Hello and welcome back to another episode of this FM20 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's season 11, episode 4, and today we're back as promised for a couple of big, big moments. It's transfer deadline day in January, our director of football's first January window, and my word, it's been an active one. He has been going absolutely mental. We'll be taking a look at his signings and the work he's been doing in a moment. And then we'll be back to play Schalke in a cup game. We're going to play the Hanover one off camera. We're just starting to find form again in the league as we start to play mid-table sides again, following a really difficult run against the sides around us. But Schalke in the cup is really crucial if we're going to meet our expectations. I'd love to get a cup run. I'd love to get some silverware, particularly after winning the championship title with Burnley. We've had a really good couple of seasons in this save. And Salford winning the league's one title as well, of course. We've got a chance to add a cup to the cabinet too. But there is a lot to talk about. So firstly, if you are looking forward to this one, please do put a thumbs up on the video. If you've missed any of the season so far since we've joined Gladback, do catch up in the eye above. Thank you for your incredible support with this season. The numbers have gone through the roof since we've moved to Germany. So I really do appreciate your support with it. And to make sure you stay up to date, subscribe down below and turn those notifications on. You'll get alerts as daily FM20 content releases from this series, the Dorking Wanderer Save, and our weekly live stream series as well, as well as two episodes a week from Cricket19 and the Stadium Review Series too. But this is all about a massive moment for our director of football. He has gone insane this month. You can see the title challenge is probably off limits now. We had a poor run against the top six. Borussia Dortmund now well clear, Leipzig and Bayern Munich just above us too. But we've still got that 9 point cushion to Leverkusen and 10 points to Hoffenheim, 12 to Schalke. So I'm hoping we can sneak 4th place and get in the Champions League next year. But at the very worst, surely it's a Europa League place. And if we're going to be in Europe next season, we're going to need a bigger squad. And our director of football seems to be preparing for that early. So let's go and have a look at the transfers in and out so far. There's one that's joining at the end of the season from Schalke at 32. I'm a little concerned about it. And there's no pending deals at the moment as we move into the final day of the window. But if we look at the transfer history, you can see that's because most of the work's already been done. We have had one big deal out of the club and four big deals into it. One more youngster joining as well. But it has been an incredible window with some brilliant young players joining. So let's talk about Roberto Alvarado first. Signed for 12.25 million in the summer, sold for 11.75 in winter. Was unhappy, causing trouble behind the scenes. At 31, we said he was most likely to be a flop and it's been proven to be the case. So the one that I wasn't really sure about with the director of football, but he got his money back, you've got to be fair to him. And he is now back over in France playing with Rennes. But then we've got four big ones coming in and the rest of the budget spent. We'll firstly talk about this youngster that's coming, Rainer Vogt, I think that is. I'm trying to think of Bertie Vokes, the old uh, Scotland manager. But a 17-year-old right winger, not got much potential, but it's worth a gamble, isn't it? It's next to no money, and I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine. But four big deals. These are the ones we've got to talk about. The least exciting was the first one, and also the most expensive. 11.25 million, Sally Hassan from Bordeaux. A really decent player, three-star ability, three-and-a-half potential, Iraqi international, and a good playmaker who's also played in Norway with Rosenborg and over in his native Iraq as well. So there's plenty of experience in his career and he's worth a lot of money. He's in a good age, he's coming into his peak, but I'm not sure he's quite what we need at the moment. He's a backup player, he will be off the bench as needed, but he's not quite going to be first choice. So if we look at the reports, he's sort of there with Jimenez above Leunan, he'll overtake him. But he's ruined by a man who comes in later in the window, who we'll talk about in a moment. But firstly, to a domestic signing, Christoph Bales. This man coming in from VfB Stuttgart for 9.25 million. He's a 20-year-old left winger, a great personality, likes to cut in as an inside forward. He suits our tactic perfectly. He's already got two and a half star ability and he's got four star potential with a strong personality as well. He's got all the key attributes in the right areas. Physically, he's outstanding. Mentally, he's strong. And technically, in the key areas, he's very good. He's training well. He's already made appearances for his former club this season at this level. And I've got very high hopes for him. So fingers crossed he will be as good as we're expecting. Already a German under-21 international. And that subject doesn't change as we move on. Alexander Bittel is next. The best signing of the window, possibly. 
from Freiburg for nine and a half million. A 22-year-old striker from Germany. Three-star ability, three and a half potential. And if Ed Seekins doesn't say next season, we've got a player who's just as good. I mean, physically, look at him. He's incredible. The pace, agility, acceleration, balance, all there. He's good in the air. He's great in the finish. He's composed. He's good off the ball. It's just he's not got a weakness. That's the thing. Maybe long shots, but he should be in and around the box. He has not got a weakness, and he's already scored one goal for us. He's had to cover on the left wing a couple of times, and he has been excellent when he's done so. Played for Bayer Leverkusen and Freiburg, scored goals galore at both of them, and he's going to do the same for us, I've absolutely no doubt. Again, a German under-21 international, and scored over 10 goals for them. And then finally, it's the one that got away from the summer. From FC Bayern Munich, £9 million, Vladimir Jovanovic. 18 years of age, so will go down as homegrown at the club. Two and a half star ability, four and a half potential. Becomes our first backup at centre half, becomes a holding midfielder off the bench, and at 18, a German under 21 international who's going to have a very big career in this game. So we are going to get him straight into the senior squad, and we are going to get him involved in this first team because he is a wonder kid and he is going to be an absolute superstar. So that's him promoted to the first team. I would argue this has already been an exceptional window. So we'll wait and see if there's any other bits of news going out of the club. And if that happens, there may be some budget left for those coming in. But in my book, this has been an exceptional January and I'll be interested to get your thoughts as well. Into deadline day we go. We'll be back if there's any news throughout the day. We have got some big news to get through here and it's just going absolutely potty this month. So we've got this young 16-year-old attacking midfielder, Rolf Neumeyer. He's a good player and he's getting big offers of around £6-7 million from Leipzig and Dortmund, both of which have been rejected. So he obviously wants big money for him. If he feels his future is at the club, that's absolutely fine. We've then got a loan offer him for an experienced wide player, Jacob Brun Larsen from Schalke, 150 grand a month. I mean, he's 31, he's very versatile, I can understand him coming in. I mean, if we were in Europe, he would be a great signing to have. But I don't see how he benefits the squad this season. But if it's just as a loan deal and it's just to give us an extra option, no issues. He scored four goals and three assists in the Bundesliga already this year. He's obviously got quality and we'll be happy to have him in the squad. We've then got an offer for another youngster. This man is Herbert Buderath, a 15-year-old attacking fullback. He's okay and his attributes look decent. Already one star ability, but he's not got the biggest potential apparently. He's a wing-back, which doesn't really suit the tactics I like to play. I hate using a back three. So I can understand why he's going. And to be honest, if his potential is judged correctly, that makes sense to sell him on. So potentially 275 grand, sell on fees as well. There's going to be a lot of action today. The Larson offers accepted. Optional future fee and a playing wage of 100%. But to be honest, if he's going to be involved in the squad, I've no issue with having him for four months. Right, one signing in, one signing out. Buderath has left. He's gone to Union Berlin in the second tier. No issue with that whatsoever. Brun Larsen is joining us on loan. Three-star ability, three-star potential. We'll get him involved in the squad. And it just bolsters our European chase. He's almost as good as a Beng on the right wing. On the left, he's probably the best ahead of Castrati. That's interesting. What's his best role? Inverted winger. Well, he could be competing for the lineup. I might have to take it back. Although, to be fair, Bootle has been playing there for now and he would definitely get first preference. We've also got another offer. This one's our head of youth development. That's a very good player. 16-year-old Roger Zapp from Frankfurt. 2.3 million up front. One and a half star ability, four and a half potential. His attributes are exceptional. The one thing he's missing is personality. But we can, of course, work on that. We've got plenty of mentoring groups and good experienced players here. There we go, then. The deal is done. Roger Zapp joins the club. We'll get him involved in the squad anyway, as well as Jovanovic, who we missed out last time. I presume he's going to be in the under-19s, the new kid. So let's go and have a look for him. He is not there. That's the other lad. Where is he? Am I going insane? Roger Zapp, ineligible. So there you go. We can't sign him up to the squad yet. But either way, a very good young player and we'll get him straight into a mentoring group after this episode. This January has been exceptional. I've no way to describe it. It's just absolutely incredible. That's now seven signings. There's a mix of brilliant young players for the future. Good first team players for now. A clever loan signing that just gives us versatility everywhere. And a brilliant youngster at 16 who just needs a bit of work off the pitch. 
We're still rejecting offers, now up to 11.5 million for Neymar. They must have very high hopes for him as well. The transfer window has slammed shut, no further action, but it certainly wasn't a day without incident. Please do let me know in the comments what you think of all of those January signings and how we're going to prepare this squad for next season. The biggest challenge at the moment with one game a week is keeping them all happy this year. After that, I think it's going to be a doddle. I've just shown the player wage expenditure here, just so you can see how well we're doing. Both Schalke, Wolfsburg, Bayer Leverkusen, all higher than us, and we're above them all in the league. It shows just how well we're going. And of course, Bayern and Borussia Dortmund, Leipzig as well, well clear of the rest. We completely expect that. So if we can get and compete with those guys moving forward, that shows just how much of a good job we're doing. But for now, the title... But for now, the focus is entirely on getting fourth and going on a big cup run. So we're going to go and play the Hanover game off camera, and then we'll be back in a moment to face Schalke in the cup, as well as reflect on our results since the last episode. And in the meantime, let me know what you think of the signings. We're back for the cup game against Schalke, following a bit of disappointment in between. Though there is some news off the pitch, Nicholas Stark has got himself a new one-year deal. So he has signed a deal that is half his wage, and he's still going to be involved. And he's only going to be a regular starter. So hopefully next season we can gradually phase him out the team. And he might be a key player in Europe alongside youngsters as well, don't forget. But let's go and talk about the schedule where I'm afraid the goals and the fluency has just dried up a little bit since the last one. You're with me, of course, for those two games against Dortmund and Leverkusen. The one against Bayer, a crucial one, of course, as we kept a point to keep the distance to them. And since then, it's been a little bit patchy. We lost 2-1 away at Leipzig. Unfortunately, Ed Seekins with a consolation wasn't quite enough. Liram Kostrati picked up an injury there and has been out ever since. A one all draw at home to Hoffenheim. Again, Seekins with the equaliser. But against 10 men for most of the second half, we just could not find a winner. However, we followed that with a victory against relegation-threatened Werder Bremen. A 2-0 win, Bittle getting his first for the club and Kennedy a Beng scoring as well before a 0-0 draw in the game we just played against Hanover. We looked a bit toothless. We brought in Larson for his debut. It didn't work out. We brought Bittel and Hassan off the bench. Unfortunately, though, we didn't look great going forward. The form of a Beng generally and Oliveira is something to worry about. And Seekins, the last couple, not quite been at his best. But into today's game we go. We've still got optimism there. If we look at the competitions, we're still seven clear of Bayer Leverkusen. And we have, on paper got a slightly easier run coming up now whether it will play out that way I don't know and then from mid-March onwards we've got Bayern Munich again and then a lot more difficult ones it's a live commentary to finish the episode in light snow we're playing away to shell cut and it's for a place in the next round of the cup so we're gonna go I think as strong as we possibly can I'm just looking at where I might be able to make changes so I think on the left wing could we bring in Bowles I know he's not rated quite as well Bittles can come in up front. We want to try and gradually get the permanent signings in. Seekins will stay on the bench for it. Is there anyone we can bring off the bench here? We've got Boa there. We've got Jelly. We've also got Fernandez. But I'm not sure which is the best one to take out, to be brutally honest. At centre half, we're going to bring in Jovanovic. He's going to replace Nicholas Stark, something that's going to happen more often next season. And also in central midfield, Hassan can come in for Jimenez. But he's not really natural as a Mazala. But we're going to go for it anyway. So a few changes. A little bit of a rotation to normal. And that is the 11 we've gone for. It's Maximiano in goal. Markovic and Pereira the fullbacks with Jovanovic and Kawakita centre half. Bill Helmson's alongside Hassan today. His first start for the club. A Beng Vera and Balbs over on the left wing. With Vittel on his own up front. Seekins on the bench if we need him. A big sign in. And we'll leave Larson out the squad for this one. Let's go and get into it. In fact, you know what? We'll take Stark off the bench because we've already got Bouillou there. So there we go. Larson's on the bench. More attacking reinforcements if we need them. And let's see if we can get over the line and finally score a goal in this one. 4-4-2 for Schalke today. And a few youngsters getting a debut today. And that's perhaps where the problem is. Because we've had so many January signings and so many changes, we're a little bit disjointed. But we're going to get motivated. We're going to try and get the lads up for this. And hopefully, with a big challenge in store, they're going to be able to get over the line. We've had a little bit of freeze in there. I'm not sure. This has happened at a few press conferences and we've ended up having to send the assistant. So let's go and get into it and see if we can get a result against Schalke. Early on, it's a long ball forward, but it's stolen straight for Pereira via Kawakita. Goes all the way back to our keeper to start. 
and this time he's made no mistake in possession. For those of you who don't know what I'm on about, go back and watch the Bayern episode. I think it's episode two this season. It was the most bizarre moment of the series so far. Vera finds Phil Helmson in the middle. It's a far more positive start. Lovely through ball for Bittle and just wide of the post. A snapshot first time and probably had time to take a touch if we're being honest. But five minutes gone, it's a much more positive start but we still haven't looked like threatening the keeper. It's a long ball away from Schalke though as we're back for a second highlight of the game. Costa on the left, long ball forward. The centre-half's beaten there. It's Jovanovic coming in. Didn't make it and the shot's wide this time from Schalke. One good chance at either end, but no shot on target from either of the highlights. Ten minutes to the break. We've gone back to our positive mentality, which worked earlier on this season. We took it off against the top clubs because we were getting outplayed. But here's Phil Helmson switching it to the left. Markovic into the area. Goes to the back post. Into Bittle. Poachers finish from a brilliant young striker. We've brought him into the team and he's done exactly what he's paid to do. He has put that ball in the back of the net. And it is now Schalke nil, Borussia Mönchengladbach 1. And we're back on the front foot yet again with a flying tackle from the Schalke right back. Balls for Markovic though. To Bowles. Had a bit of a quiet debut so far. But back to Wilhelmsen who continues the attack. Into Bowles again. Here's the Icelandic for the third time. And he's just keeping possession really smoothly. Vera plays a 1-2 with him. Out to a bang on the right. The wonder kid's gone a bit quiet in recent weeks. But he's back to Wilhelmsen there. Tries to switch to the left to Markovic. So the byline. Beats one. Cross is blocked. And eventually it's going to be got away is it? No he's going back towards his own goal. And he clears it but not very well at all. Here's the Icelandic midfielder for a fourth time. Into Vera. Back to Wilhelmsen again. Switcher plays headed away, but only as far as Bowles, and he's got Markovic on the overlap. Beats the fullback. Chance to cross. Back to Vera. There's two out there, but he goes inside to Hassan. Oh, he's hit a crossbar, and Bittel on the rebound. Tenth goal of the season between his two clubs, and a second of the game for Gladbach today. But Sally Hassan with a brilliant strike from the edge, and unlucky not to get his first for the club as it thundered the crossbar. But it looks like cut progress is on the cards. And since going more advanced and more attacking, we've actually looked better. So perhaps this side just needs to be on the front foot. As it goes wide to Weisner, Schalke are on the front foot this time. Into the front post. Oh, it's a poor goal to concede. After a brilliant first half performance, you don't want to let one like that in. Jovanovic caught out. Markovic didn't close the cross. And at half time, Schalke have got themselves a lifeline. We still lead 2-1 with Gladbach though. And Bittle is on a hat-trick in the second half. So we're going to tell the lads to keep it up. And let's see if we can put in another strong 45. It's a free kick on the left. A dangerous position for Hill, Phil Helmson. Kawakita with a free header. But it's over the bar. He had to do better. It was an open goal as the keeper was in no man's land. But 10 minutes into the second half and it still remains just 2-1 to Gladbach. 20 minutes left on the clock and it's time for changes. So on the left wing, Bowles is going to be replaced. Fernandez will come on for him. A Beng again has not had the best game, but I want to be careful with him. Vera's had a good game. That's a good sign. Sally Hassan, an average game, and he's not fit. So let's get him off. Jimenez or Louis Nahn. I think we bring Louis Nahn on. He doesn't play that often. Box-to-box -box midfielder on support. And then what else can we do? I'm going to leave it for now. We'll make the last change if we need to. 20 minutes left. It remains 2-1 here. But Schalke still a threat while there's only one in it. Maximiano with a long goal kick though. A Beng flicks on for Bittel. Challenge but it falls for Vera. Out to the left back Markovic. There's two or three inside him. But he's trying to go alone to the byline here. And he comes out the challenge with a ball still. Here's Vera. He's got two inside. Trying to go alone despite them trying to bring him down. Back to Fernandez who shoots just wide. And it remains 2-1. But there were a few fouls in that attack. They're doing anything to stop us. Phil Helmson playing a 1-2 with Pereira from a throw-in. To the byline, the right back. Back to the Icelandic again. Chance to cross. Good ball into Vera. And he heads just over the bar. And it's still 2-1. How on earth are we missing so many chances? Ten minutes left. We will make another change. Unfortunately, it's a Beng that's not had a good game. I know Kawakita's on the yellow, but I don't want to do too much there. Markovic a bit tired. Do we bring him off? But he's so much better defensively that I feel I have to keep him on. So do you know what? No. Kennedy or Beng off. On for him will be Larson the new signing. And we'll see what we can do for the last 10 minutes. Corner kick to Schalke. Chance to cross it in. To the back post. Jovanovic heads away. But it falls for Malik on the edge. Chance to cut it back. Brown's there. 20 yards out. But he's got pressure on him. Finds Vargas. Into Costa. Oh it's a penalty. Why on earth would you do that? Kawakita on a yellow as well. Lucky not to be sent off. And Costa's got a chance to level it up. From 2-0 down, we're about to throw it away. Costa scores. Schalke a level. 
And what a disastrous second half this has been. We're going to have to ask the lads to show some passion because this half they've been diabolical. And they've just let Schalke back into the game and complacency and missed chances is going to end up costing us. Five to go, 2-2 two, two, and it looks like we're on course to throw this away. Into stoppage time, throw in for the left back Markovic, brought down by the full back, that has to be a second yellow, it is, good refereeing on this occasion, and a set piece with a chance to nick it, we don't see the highlight, it's not going to happen, and it is 2-2 with extra time on the horizon, we're going to tell the lads we appreciate their effort, or in fact don't let it slip away, that's better, and most of them confident, into extra time, a fourth sub now available, can we do anything else in here, Kawakita's knackered and did give away the penalty, but I don't know what else to really do here. Vera struggling. Jimenez could come on for him. I mean, what do you do? I've got an idea. Larson to right back. Pereira comes off. Ed Seekins on for him. And Bittle to the right wing. Bittle can be an inside forward on attack. And Seekins will go up front, giving us an extra attacking option. 20 minutes of extra time left. Phil Helmson with a free kick. Into Larson. Seekins in. Super sub does the job. And that is when you are vindicated most as manager. The man we dropped to right back with the assist. And the centre forward we brought on in extra time. Has scored what is potentially the winner here. It's Schalke 2, Gladbach 3. And we might be doing it the hard way. But it looks like we are still going to do it. We've got a corner kick now. Into the one minute of added on time. Seekins header straight at a keeper. And that could have just about wrapped it up. We're just about at the end of the first half of extra time. And Schalke looking for a route back into this. They've got the ball on the right hand side with Defner. Down to 10 men but still looking a threat on the break. Long ball forward. Markovic heads away. Fernandez, the substitute brings down. Lovely bit of skill. Keeps the ball brilliantly and finds Phil Helmson. Back to Jovanovic. Not good for a midweek game. 120 minutes. But Bittle on for Seekins. Oh he's offside. I thought we'd got that wrapped up then. But it is still on a knife edge. It is still 3-2. And there's 15 minutes of extra time to go. The full time whistle has gone. It is a lot harder than it should have been. But we have persevered and stay in the cup. Schalke 2, Gladbach 3 after extra time. And we're through to the next round with the draw to come tomorrow. So we're going to very quickly skip ahead and see who we get. And then we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up. There's the final action of the episode then. Borussia Mönchengladbach draw FC Cologne in the quarter-final of the German Cup. A great opportunity for us to make the semis against a side who are mid-table in the Bundesliga. And Bayern and Leipzig have drawn each other, so one of the big boys will be going out. That is a good sign. If we can then get the winner of Hoffenheim Augsburg, and then we can play either Dortmund or Bayern or Leipzig in the final, that would be the ideal route. But let's wait and see. There's plenty of work to be done before then, and there is going to be a big derby in the quarter-final. I am really looking forward to that. Let's see when it is. And maybe we can come back for it. So it's at the start of March with a game against the same opposition in the league. Do you know what? We're going to do something similar next episode. We'll show the Cologne Cup game. It's a big one. And then we'll play the Cologne League game off camera. And we'll come back for Bayern Munich away. So it'll be a double header next time out. Cologne and Bayern Munich. A place in the semi-final of the Cup up for grabs. And a chance to cement our top four place in the league. But if you did enjoy this episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you thought of the performance and more importantly of all of those January signings. Perhaps not going to have their best impact this year, but if they can gel and we can have a good team cohesion come the summer, there should be very little the director of football needs to do then and we could have a great squad for Europe next year. What competition that will be, we'll find out in the next couple of episodes and I hope you'll come and join me for those. If you want to make sure you don't miss them, please subscribe down below and turn those notifications on. You'll get alerts as daily FM20 content releases on the channel. This one will be back on Tuesday at 4.30, Dorkin Wanderers in the meantime on Monday. We've also got our weekly stadium review series continuing tomorrow. That one's going to be focusing on Crew Alexandra, a club that have just been promoted to League One on points per game. We've also got our live stream series, the first episode of which was last Tuesday. The second one will be back this Tuesday at 10am. Thank you so much to everyone who joined along with that. It's the Burnley side from the head coach, but in a youth academy challenge. And I really enjoyed the first one, so hopefully you can pop along. And finally, Cricket 19 continues twice a week. The last episode was at one o'clock today. So if you did miss that one earlier on, you can catch up with it in the eye above. But a big thanks for your support on this channel and over on the podcast as well. It has been really appreciated the last couple of weeks. And I hope to see you next time for a massive episode here as we go for the last four in a cup in a derby and a chance to face off against Bayern again. Mm -hmm.